Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a City Fight Wargaming table for Warhammer 40k and Kill Team. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please do click that subscribe button for more videos to come or check out the link below if you wish to support the channel in any other way. I am back again with another board build video. I did do one a couple of months ago that was a sort of muddy, trenchy, World War I themed wooden kind of board uh, used for Kill Team. Check out the link up there if you haven't seen that video. This one's going to be quite different. This one is a city fight board. I've never done something like this. In fact, I've only really done a couple of board builds in my whole life. So I thought I'd try and test out some of these techniques and skills and things I'd learned and see if I could put them to good use to make a new 40k board. The sizes of this one, it is two Kill Team boards put together to fit in with the new 40k recommended sizes. So it's uh, 44 by 30, but it splits into two, which is actually two Kill Team boards. I was lucky enough to get sent some buildings by Cromlech. They sent me sort of four big hab block buildings. I'll show you those as well, how you put them together, how they look and how they work. Other than that, I don't want to keep you here too long. I just want to get into it. So I'm going to show you how to do this from start to finish, talk about all the techniques and skills I used on the way and show you hopefully what you think will be a lovely finished product at the end. So I'll catch you guys back at the end. The first thing I did was get all of the different materials I think I might need to use during this board build. There's random bases, air drying clay, modge podge. I know I'm going to need the basic essentials like knives and glue and rulers. So I've got those with me and I'm going to see what takes my fancy as I do the build. Yes, I've got wood. This is five mil plywood supported with 25 mil beading. It's 25 mils deep because if I want to put 25 mil polystyrene in it, I can. These are the standard kill team sizes, so 30 by 22 inches put together is the new minimum size for the Warhammer 40k boards. I've made sure the gap is really, really small and really fine because I hate it when there's a big gaping hole down the middle of our board. I decided to use five mil foam board as the basis for the board in general. This will be sort of the pavements, the underneath of the buildings, the bases of the building, anything cement wise. The roads are three mil cork rolls. I ordered these online for about eight pounds for six of them. So I feel like I've got good materials to go with. The buildings I'm going to use for this board were sent to me by the guys at Cromlick Games. Tabletop Scenics is a sister company to those, so thank you very much for these. To put them together, you just need PVA glue, super glue, and a knife. When you open it up, you get instructions for each different set. I've got four sets here. They're quite easy to put together. They're quite easy to understand. Not only do they have one piece of wall for each side, each side has three parts to it as well. So you glue these on, they're extra thick, really nicely detailed. So pop them out of the sprues like you would with any other MDF terrain set. If you've not put any together before, don't be too threatened, don't be too worried. Just take them all out of the sprues, follow the instructions and they go together quite easily. These ones actually come with sort of some rebar in them, which is sort of broken down from the concrete. So pop all the little squares out, pop everything out and make sure they're lovely and clean before you put them together. Do make sure you keep hold of the offcuts. They're really, really good for this. All these ones are little sort of brick sized things. I don't know if I'm going to use them at this point. I do, but I didn't know I was going to, but I thought I might save them along with the offcuts from the MDF sprues themselves. They come in really handy for making extra floors and extra walls just to sort of fill the board out a bit. On to assembling the buildings. I put a small blob of super glue on each of the tack points, each of the joints on these to help them stay together whilst they were gluing. Grab hold of the PVA, stick this all the way down the edge of the joints all along. Try and avoid the bits you put super glue on as I don't know if PVA and super glue mix very well. I found they didn't, so I just did it this way. Stick this along the sides, hold them together, push them and let them set, let them stay. Then do the same with the other side. Just follow the instructions on this. It tells you which parts to glue in what order. It makes it easier to assemble them all. And as I was talking about before, these also have a facing. So it's not just one piece of wood. It's, it's got detailed facings on them all. It has the same on the back and the front. So it's quite tricky, quite fiddly this bit, but it's great. And these are the buildings once they're done. I was really, really impressed with these. They are sturdy, they are thick, they are detailed. They are just great. So some of the best MDF buildings or HDF maybe, buildings I've ever put together. It's back to the drawing board. I've got my set square, I've got stencils, I've got all sorts of things here I'm going to use to try to measure out where I'm going to put the roads. I think I've decided at this point that I don't want the board just straight on. That might look a little bit boring. So I've got everything on a slight angle. I'm making sure the roads are wide enough to fit a knight down in case I decide to increase this board to four boards. I'm not entirely sure on the layout, but it is now beginning to take some sort of shape. Cutting the foam might have been one of my least favorite parts of this entire process. I needed to make sure everything fitted how I wanted it to. I'd measured out the roads, I'd measured out the pavements, so now it's just a matter of putting it all together and gluing it down. I was being very careful. I'm using a pretty sharp knife here, doing one or two runs down before cutting it off. 
uh, I decided it would be best to put the foam underneath the board and cut it to the shape rather than put the foam on top and try to try to draw straight lines. If you know what I mean, I'm not sure that makes sense, but it made sense when I did it eventually. It got me everything at the right angles. Everything fitted perfectly in the end. I also made a decision on the railway tracks. I am going to use them. So it's cut more foam. This feels like a dangerous part because I've actually only got so much foam anyway. And if I ruin all these bits, I don't have any more to do. So a bit of a hack and slash job, but everything fits perfectly. All the angles are straight in the end and I was very happy. Still, although I'm cutting this, I, I do have another plan in case I don't like the look of this or the look of the finish. Uh, you'll see what that is a little bit later on. It works. It's there. I've measured the gaps between the road and the pavements as well. Then it's cutting the roads out in between all the parts. I could have put the foam on top of this so that way the whole board was raised another three mil but I didn't need to. After an hour or two of cutting and gluing and pasting and measuring everything is done everything is in the right place. Great. Do you remember all of those off cuts I told you about? Well here we're going to use them. I've got a massive box of tiny square cubes cut out from all the rebar on the MDF terrain. I had a bit of a plan. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this because it was going to take absolutely ages. And to be honest, I couldn't really be bothered, but I did in the end anyway. I'm going to show you what I did. I used these as cobblestone edges to put an end between the pavement or bases of the buildings and the road itself. You could do this with other things. I have done this before where I did a, a board build with Luke from Geek Gaming and we used resin molded curb stones but I don't have anything like that I've got nothing that would really fit this other than these but I thought I was being very clever and using all the materials I could without any extra expense so these just come with the buildings they're off cuts maybe we can use them here I did change my mind after a good hour or two of doing this this was such a tedious process I almost gave up but I carried on I'm going to do this footage at 1750 times real speed to show you how long it took this was this was maybe three to four hours doing the entire board and here i'm doing across the entire edge everywhere but throughout this i decided well some of these sides are going to get wrecked anyway some of these bits are going to get ruined so i might as well leave gaps and at least that way it forces me to hack out areas where bombs or shells would have exploded and blown these up but i did the entire board this way it, it really was a painstakingly long process but I was so happy with the result once it was finished. I did everywhere and this is how it looks. So I left a few gaps as you can see to cut out things out, but what, what a difference this has made to this board now, rather than just non-edged bits, it's great. I, I even found other offcuts actually that made good railway sleeper type edges rather than the normal cobblestones. So it, it's, it's given me a real good feel for what I want to do with the project. I put the buildings down, I've got the, where, the railway tracks down, nothing's glued, but this is how it's looking right now. And now we've got the board looking all nice and pretty, it's time to start hacking it up. So get your knife out. If you are underage, make sure you get some supervision or get a parent or guardian to help you with this, just because you've got to be careful that these blades are sharp. But hack away. Don't be too worried. We're going to be covering this with ground covers later anyway, but it just gives you an idea of where you want the bombshells to have hit. Then get some PVA. I've got a, I think this is a five litre tub for about £12 from B&Q. I'm sure you can get it from any hardware store. Whack it down and start gluing the buildings down. I did measure the gaps along the sides to make sure it's all accurate. I'd also glued a second part of foam board here to make a raised area. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I had some walls. But I thought I'd glue these down and stick them on there. They might, they might make for a cool end of something. I thought I'd treat you to some of the wonders of filming. Check this out. That's my camera falling over, but reflexes of a cat. To make the rubble, I used some casting plaster. This it was mixed in with water, sort of the consistency of thick cream. I'm just using a standard baking tray, nothing special, nothing fancy. You could, I guess, use different things here, any sort of metal container. You don't need to bake it, just somewhere for it to go. That keeps it quite thin and we'll smash this up later on. To make up the ground forms and sort of fill in some of the gaps before I smash the rubble on, I use the Geek Gaming's modeling compound. If you haven't yet seen or heard of this stuff, do check it out. I've, I'll leave a link below to this. It's probably the best thing ever for building any board build ever, building anything ever, ever. It's so good. It is a mix of plastic caster and insulation. Now this insulation does not have asbestos in as people questioned the last time I used it. It's not going to kill you. You can't sell asbestos anymore. I don't think certainly not in something like this. So this is just helps it stick together, helps it bond. It dries quite quickly. So that the wetter you make this, the longer you can play with it. The drier it is, the sooner it will set. Get it to whatever consistency you're happy with. If you're going to make it so it dries quite quickly, make sure to only work in small sections. I would advise that at all times, otherwise it will just go off and you'll waste all your time and all of your money. 
I want this set up quite quickly because I want to get this all done in the one filming session here. This is, the whole video is done over several days and I want this part done before I move on to the next one. Uh, I've, I've, this will set within about 15, 10, 15 minutes here. Tap it down, rub it in, make sure it's all smooth. You can see I've also stuck some of the other MDF offcuts down here. That's extra bits of floor, extra bits of wall to really fill out the board for when I'm playing my games of 40K. Stick it up on the top as well, anywhere you want rubble to go, anywhere you want some sort of different destroyed areas to be, use this stuff. Recognize this good old Mr. Baking Tray? Well, I wanted to make it look really cool and like flop it out so you could see it all in one piece, but it broke beforehand, so meh, that didn't work. We're gonna use this for rubble. This is actually made from casting plaster as well. They're pretty much the same stuff that's in the modeling compound. So it'll it'll take the same paint, take things the same way. So give it a good smash. This is quite fun, smash it up. I've got a couple of these trays because I'm going to need quite a lot. Cover the ground everywhere around the buildings, anywhere you want this to go with pretty thick PVA. This is straight out of the big five liter tub here. I'm, I'm plastering this everywhere, caking it on. Uh, I will rub this in obviously so it all it all covers everywhere, but make sure you've got loads of PVA because this is what's going to make this stick to the board. The plaster is porous, so it will take in some of this, so it will stick better, and then just throw it on. Keep pine this on, make sure models can walk around on this, keep testing it if you want to. If some bits sat weirdly, break it, smash it. Uh, it, it is pretty solid at this point. I might have made mine with too much water because it was still a bit crumbly after a good day or two, but that's not too much of an issue. Just keep lobbing it on. Try and be realistic. Try and think where the building's gonna explode, where it's gonna fall down, where it's gonna collapse, where the majority of the height will be. Th this is really what's gonna make this board build, I think, is, is the placement of this. I mean, you can't mess up. Look, just throw it in. Throw it everywhere. The more of this you use, the more destroyed and more rubble will be around on the board. It can make for playing surfaces to be quite uneven. So as I said, test it, check it, break it, push it, smash it. You can play with this for quite a while. It's not gonna set very quickly. Uh, you do have some crumbly bits as well in there. If you do, make sure to use those to fill some gaps. Make sure, as you can see, you just want everything to look like it's been destroyed. And if you are a fan of the channel, you'll see me using this stuff all the time. This is cheap one pound can spray cans from the Euro shop here. It's one Euro actually, I'm in Ireland now, aren't I? But yeah, cover the whole board in this. I probably used maybe four spray cans all together on both boards, so two on each, and just absolutely blast it. This will seal the MDF. This will hold in all of the plaster as well. I did put some extra stuff on the plaster. It's brown, that's kind of like ash from the fire. It actually made a difference, so I didn't bother mentioning it. If I did it again, I wouldn't have done that because it, it, it brought nothing to it. It's rubble nonetheless, and we're still gonna add more ground covers anyway. So give the boards a really good coat. Get absolutely everywhere, up underneath the buildings, everywhere you can, get it covered black. So that's gonna be the base for the next colors we put on. I didn't actually show this part, but I use multiple spray cans now to give myself a really, really nice sort of brown, bone, gray, white kind of finish to the board. I didn't do it in the studio because I'd have like gassed myself to death on uh, aerosol can fumes. So I did do this off camera, but this is how it looked. To achieve this finish, just spray until you're happy. I started with the gray from quite a distance away and that sort of settled down everywhere. Then I put in some small bits of brown, some small bits of bone, some small bits of white, some gray over it again, and it's come out like this. I am so happy with this. I've not really done it to this scale before. I have sprayed MDF terrain before. You'll find it so easy, just judge it by eye. Again, you can't mess up if it's too gray or too white, spray it back with black, spray it back with gray. It just gives a really nice color and some really nice finish to all of the buildings. This bit is probably my favorite bit. This is where the whole board build comes together. I have got fine dried sand and ivory tile grout. Mix these up. There's probably more grout than sand in there. This will harden. So the grout hardens when it gets wet. So it ends up with a really, really solid ground covering that won't come apart and won't flake away. It is very powdery. It's very dirty. Here's the old railway tracks. I sprayed them up brown, gave them some pretty, pretty similar uh, in the way I spray these as I did with the buildings. Uh, I cut the ends there. I had some silver on to make it look like they're, they're worn and rusty. I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to use mud or sand until I decided to just do it. So I've gone for sand. I've got like a, a windswept nuclear land. And here we go, drop this on, put it all over everywhere. This will hold the tracks in as well because the grout just sets so, so solid. It's great, it's very messy though, it's very powdery, so do be careful when you're using this. Probably put a gas mask on as well, or a mask or whatever, some sort. You can see there the powder just flying off. But I'm using this to look like a windswept area, so I'm, I'm throwing this into the, the, the buildings a bit as well to give some, some sort of overlap look and, and chucking it in there. It just it gave a really cool finish. 
I sped it up. It, it's not actually taken that long to do. I just wanted to make sure everything was placed in the right place. But I'm very, very happy with this. I, I wasn't quite sure how it's going to turn out, but it's great. Look, that to me looks like it's been destroyed and it's been left and it's been abandoned and the wind has blown all over the ruins and the rubble. It was set solid. It was set dry. It was set that kind of color. It's, I'm just really, really happy with this part of the board build now. On the opposite side of the board from the train tracks in the desert, I kind of imagined this is the, the back end of a senator or some sort of high ranking political officer or whatever. Uh, I kind of thought it might be good to have some sort of greenery, some trees, some soil, some grass. So I used a load of soil mixed up with grout and threw this down over some PVA and it sticks, it dries solid, it dries really hard. And then I threw some bits of sand on top of that as well, just to try and blend it in with the board a bit. A couple of other products or materials you should have if you're building boards. One is isopropanol, I put it in a spray can, and the other one is watered down PVA. Don't worry too much about how much water to PVA you've got, as long as it sprays out, you're fine. It, it, it still comes out white and milky anyway, you can see that. And just absolutely soak the board. You're going to need to do this quite a lot. I put some of the ground covers on at this point as well. I did show you, I thought I'd show you this. This is just some cement, leftover cement, dried cement from the, the corner of the garage where the floors come up. The board looked a little bit bland, so I wanted to add some more browns and some other colors to it. It won't actually be that brown when it's wet because it, it will sort of clean it and wash it off. But it, I thought it looked cool and it added something else to the board. I cannot stress how much you need to cover this board in PVA glue. Do it for a week, do it for two weeks. Just keep spraying, it will keep drying and it will just help it all stick together and stay more solid so no loose pieces fall off. And here we are after what I think is the third coat now. So this is a couple of days later on. I've just been soaking this every day whenever I've been down to the studio. You can see how it's looking now. It's starting to look a lot better. I added some sand into that soil because I wasn't too happy with the soil color. I thought maybe the sand might tie it all in a bit better. I put some tree branches in there, as you can see as well, just, just to make it look a bit different. On top of the soil we put earlier, I thought I'd try and spice it up a bit with some green. Using the Geek Gaming Mid Green Fine 2-in-1 Flock, I just took this out in little clumps, little handfuls. I did want this to look more clumpy rather than an even spread, because if you've ever looked in the deserts and sands or in those kinds of things, it does tend to grow in clumps rather than a nice spread. It's not a golf course. This is a post-apocalyptic future world. And then I put in, this is kind of like a crumpled up moss. Uh, I would use the tree canopies generally, so it went well under the trees. Again, sprinkled on from some height in clumps. You can't see my hand, but I am dropping this on everywhere. It's quite clumpy anyway. Just added a bit more color to the board. I actually wasn't too happy with the result overall. The whole board started to look like that triple ice cream you get. It's like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. It was like sandy, gray, brown in sections. I didn't really like the look of it. So I ended up putting a bit of sand back on it to try and blend it in. And I kept putting more sand on it and more sand on it until it was quite sandy. All I've really got now is a sandy side with some shrubs and some broken trees. And the other side is kind of a wasteland. And here we have the finished product. I am so happy with how this turned out now. It's kind of got a really desaturated gray kind of look. I know it's gray, that's not quite what I mean, but it's desaturated. I even added a little carriage in there, look. I'd had some other sets, but the scale was a bit off. As you can see a little bit on the left there, the sand is more sandy on that side rather than muddy. But the walls look great. Everything looks ruined. Everything looks broken. There we go, that's that side, some broken trees. But rather than being green and brown now, it's sandy like the rest of the board. It looks like a windswept, post-apocalyptic nuclear fallout place. Imagine Talon, imagine some distant world that's been nuked and abandoned. There we go, that's the whole video done. How do you guys feel it turned out? Personally, I'm very happy with it. I've never attempted to do a city board like this. Um, I wasn't really sure, as I hope you can see throughout the process, exactly what was going on. This was filmed over maybe like 10, seven to 10 sessions. It wasn't just get in, do it all in one day. You definitely could do this quicker. Uh, when I'm filming, I don't really have the time to do it all. Could you do this in a day? I guess if you took out drying times, possibly, yeah, I, I think you could. What things would I change and what things do I feel I, I did wrong? Well, I guess part of the experimentation was the soily grass tree side. It didn't really fit with the feel of the board. I kind of knew as soon as I put it down and it dried that it didn't look right. So all I did was cover it with more sand until I was happy. I hope that shows you that if you do make any mistakes, you can always fix them. You can't really mess up a board like this too much. Have a little think about how a city might be laid out. Try and think about the thickness, the depths, also think about it in a playability sense. I've made sure I've got a building in each corner. So when I do play the new 40K, which uh, Battle Report's coming up soon, is what this board will be used for. There's, there's sufficient cover to play a game. 
Uh, I'm very happy with the fact it's split into two kill team boards because that gives me more playability from the same board anyway. A another problem I faced actually was mold. Now this is because I am in a field essentially uh, in the middle of nowhere and it's cold here. I know it's summer, but it's actually freezing cold in the studio right now. Uh, I used the water down PVA, used the spray cans, all that kind of stuff and put one board on the floor to dry whilst I was filming the other one. Foolish, I know, I didn't really think about it, but I came back a day or two later and all the MDF buildings were covered in mold. Not the MDF building's fault, nothing to do with Cromlech, nothing to do with the build quality or the style of what I'm doing. It's just it's too cold and you shouldn't really put a board on the floor. To get rid of that, I sprayed the walls very heavily with isopropanol. Actually, first of all, I sprayed it with water, dried it with a hairdryer, and then it was still moldy again. So I sprayed it with isopropanol and that just got, obviously got rid of all the mold. Uh, I used quite a lot of that, to be fair, but that really works. And I dried it with a hairdryer again, I've had no problem since, so great. I think overall, this is kind of a thing of trial and error and keep doing things until you're happy. I'm very happy with the windswept look from the, the train track side. I ended up throwing sand through windows, throwing it up to buildings as if no one cared about anything anymore. There's no barriers, there's no defenses. It's just, it's now been overtaken and it's kind of an abandoned apocalyptic wasteland. You can obviously add things to color. I've got barrels, I've got ammo crates. I was gonna put some bodies in, but I didn't wanna make this any specific to any particular faction. So I left those out. But of course you can do it if you wanna put newspapers on the walls, if you wanna put posters, spray cans, whatever, you can decorate this board however you like. I left it quite neutral because I wanna use this in more than one battle report. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit the alarm bell below for more videos. Check out all the links below. There's my Patreon down there with a private Discord. Thank you to all of my Patreons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep doing this kind of content and keep this very cold place running. I've also got links to an Amazon shop for affiliate things and my kind of hobby essentials. And there's a link down there to Grim Dice and Element Games if you buy any models or anything else. I'll also stick a link down to a place where you can buy all of these geek gaming products from. Uh, they're great. That's all you really need is those and some cheap spray cans and some MDF. And you can do this board build yourself. If you do, let me know in the comments if you want to build something. I'll, I'll do my best to answer all your questions, as I always do. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in another video. Take care.